welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. I was going to say it first, but hey, you know. You know, that's okay. Hey, you know what we're doing this week? No, what are we we're doing? We're going up to North Dakota with you Double B Outfitters. Betcha. Yeah. You know, and the crazy thing is, is we get a lot of emails where people are saying, why do you go to the same outfitters year after year? Well, the thing is, it's real simple. When you have results and all the clients are having results, you sort of well, like I just, to go there. I like going there because I love David, John, and Susie. They're great people. They aren't are. They? They're Unbelievable. Hey, this week's lucky logo is Nikon. Best optics in the world. <laughs> At the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do when you find the Nikon logo somewhere in the show. Yeah, well, you know, we're not going to waste any time because, you know, as, we, as you've seen all these years, it seems like the hunting keeps getting better. November 4th, 2004, I was in uh, I was in Iraq doing Task Force Trailblazer, the 141st Engineers out of North Dakota, National Guard. And we were heading back to our FOB and <laughs> my best friend and I were actually arguing over which, which of our favorite football teams would be doing better that year. Uh, mine's the Vikings, his was the Lions, and IED detonated next to our Humvee I was driving. Uh, 3155 artillery rounds, two incendiary grenades. Uh, the explosion ended up destroying the lower, lower half of my left leg. Um, almost took my hand as well. There's a lot of metal in there and killed my best friend. We had an idea a couple years ago to start doing something for some uh, wounded veterans and, and give back in that way. And I got a hold of the uh, North Dakota Veterans Affairs, a gentleman named Lonnie Wagner, and he, he told me uh, Phil's story. I mean, his name came to mind right away. And after hearing Phil's story, I, I knew we had to do something for, for this young man, just, just to honor him and thank him. So Brad told me to be on the eastern part of North Dakota, October 19th. I came over, he met up with me in my house, picked me up. I guided him into Cabela's in East Grand Forks. We came around the corner, there's two, three fire trucks. I couldn't count how many people were standing there. At that point, I kind of knew something was up. When we got around the corner, and he saw everything that was going on with the, the fire trucks and the guard and the police department and, and the whole line of people out there waiting to greet him. He, he just melted. He thought that was the coolest thing ever. I, I quickly learned that I wasn't there to buy supplies. They provided me with a gigantic check, which is the first time I've ever had an oversized check. That was pretty cool. And went on a little shopping spree and got all geared up, hopped in the truck, get ready to go for the double B outfitters. Turnout was tremendous. It just it just gives a credit to the, the kindness for people around this this, uh, this great country of ours. But when we got here, David and John told us there's some weather coming in, and they said the first two days that we're out there hunting is going to be we're going to need to make it work. We sat there for a long time, Kenneth and I, and finally had some does and a little button buck and a little doe fawn come in, and we're figuring out where we can film and where we can hunt to make sure everything's the way we want it to happen, and we're pretty happy with it, and we had two smaller bucks show up, and we're looking at them. They're young deer. They're out there, two eight points, and we're watching them and watching them, and then all of a sudden, Kenneth goes, Vicky. He goes, buck. this big guy comes in, he comes walking in. He just looks so much older than the other two bucks we had in there. I mean, his face looked gray, his body looked gray. He had such a big mass body to him, he was amazing. You know what, he finally, he gave me a broadside shot and I mean, 
My new Hoyt spider bit him. <laughs> My beaming went flying straight through him and I watched him go down in that cut uh, hay field. It was pretty exciting. That was redemption. I was very, very happy. First night here in North Dakota, double the outfitters. First evening, first evening whitetail hunting this season. And I've got a beautiful mature buck down in that field right there. I watched him go shoot my new Hoyt spider fixin'. This baby just went right through him. My arrow, my beam is right there with the tracer knock. Straight through him. He didn't go, oh, he might have gone 70 yards, but he's right there in that cut. Wheat field. <laughs> Give me some back. Oh, I feel so good right now. It's not even funny. Oh, last year, we had a beautiful mature buck in here. I couldn't get my bow back. And this year, I practiced and practiced to make sure I wasn't going to have any issues pulling my bow back. And so I kind of like this new Hoyt Spider Vixen. This is kind of a good bow. Thank you. David, John, thank you so much. You told me the first first night or two we need to get done. We've got bad winds coming in. That beautiful, big, old, old, mature buck came in here. And, oh, my North Dakota tag is filled, baby. Yes, yes. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> He's got to let us out of our box. He doesn't let us out. You see him? How's that yeah, look? Yeah, that looks really good. Does that look it? good? Yeah. <laughs> it looks excellent. <laughs> it was good. Okay. Oh. Should we drive out there though so we don't screw up the deer or anything? Or can we walk? Can we walk out there? Because he's just sure. there. He just he's going. Yeah, he's yeah. He's not yeah. <laughs> he's pretty. He's real white, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. Huh? Oh yeah, he's a big deer. He's beautiful. Look how old he is. Yeah. Beautiful, huh? Oh yeah, that's a dandy. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I said the first night out here, my first day whitetail hunting in the whole whole season. Oh, he's a nice deer. He's beautiful, isn't he? Thanks again. Hey, good job. Good job. <laughs> I'm pretty great. excited. This oh, is like, a great look at how he's a big yeah. old deer. He, look at the it. bump on his nose. Well, maybe it's yeah. all hair. Maybe you that's bet. just hair. No, it's an old deer. Because the other deer that we're in, you could just see the difference in their bodies and their faces and everything. And I was like, oh. It's a great deer. It is. It's a beautiful deer. It's a great representative for the deer at our place. Absolutely. It's a great deer. Look at, look at how massive he is. I saw that and I was like, he, he's got 10, so he's beautiful. And I'm extremely happy because I Great deer. got it this year. As soon as we got into the blind, we got settled in, got everything arranged, got my bow all set up. Don, the cameraman, was getting all his gear set up, and so we just sat back. And within an hour, hour we started seeing deer. Uh, we had some does come in right off the bat. Uh, then we had two bucks come in, two young bucks, one nice little ten pointer. Uh, and then they fed for a while and they moved on. And so we sat there and sat there and uh, we could see some deer up on the hill, but uh, it was getting to the point where it was getting close to dark. Shooting time was starting to erode quickly. So we decided to just shut the cameras off and sit back and just wait for John. All of a sudden, I look off to the right and I can see this big body deer coming in. And I know right away that it's a buck. As it starts to get a little bit closer, I can tell it's a good buck. So I say to Don, here's a buck coming. So Don only has the opportunity to get the one camera set up as we start to see this deer come in. So it's getting down to the last bit of shooting light and this deer starts to roll in. And as soon as I saw the mass on his horns, I knew that I was gonna to try to take the shot at this deer. All right, so I just shot a buck. 
And I'm almost positive I hit him right in the shoulder. It was our last legal shooting light. I could see him running off. And I watched him. He didn't go down, but he dropped down into some high cocktails. So we're just going to get our gear and back out of here. I love coming up here with uh, Double B Outfitters in North Dakota. Uh, the Brandt family and Ralph and Vicky, it's just great. All right, so I shot this deer last night, right at the, uh, the end of the evening, right at the last few minutes of shooting light. And um, I knew I had a hit. I could hear it as soon as it uh, hit the deer. I was a little nervous about it. We looked at the footage and knew that it was probably a little low. I look forward to this every year. It's marked on the calendar. Everybody at work and at home knows I'm leaving. Uh, as soon as I get in the truck and start driving north from Nebraska, I know it's going to be a good time. I look forward to seeing all my friends. And I'll tell you, a couple different things saved me. Number one, that broadhead saved me. Look at that. And he carried that arrow all the way right to here until he kicked it out. But that Spitfire blew through that shoulder, or actually a bottom part of the leg and right into the chest. Caught that one lung, it looks like. Maybe a little bit of the heart, I can't tell. And uh, really tore him up. So he traveled a couple hundred yards, but he bled from the very beginning. But it was exciting to see him come in last night. I got all excited as soon as I saw him, and I thought, Oh, please come in. <laughs> you know, when they're standing out there in the field like that, you're thinking, man, what's the chance? Is he gonna walk this way? And he, he did. So really great hunt, exciting times. Uh, thanks very much for helping me find this this morning too. This worked out great. But uh, I'm real happy. I really had a great time. driving us out there, I mean, we deer were piling out of that cut cornfield and we're like, oh man, we're blowing them out, you know, but but as you know, you know, especially up here, the pressure is so well controlled that you got a gut feeling that there, a lot of them are gonna return. Well, we get up in the box blind, we're sitting there and it didn't take that long. We started seeing deer way out in the CRP fields and then all of a sudden you could start seeing them come out, coming out of the bedding area that we were actually hunting the, the night before. And as they started to filter through, then they disappear. Next thing you know, we'd start seeing more, here's does and yearlings and they're starting to come our way, but they weren't coming in. And we're like, man, what is, is it our wind? What's going on? We, we sprayed down, we have our ozonics, we have everything going. We're in a box blind for crying out loud, but. They just weren't acting, you know, all that normal. Well, we could see on the skyline, we could see more deer piling out of just these open fields, heading to that cornfield. And we're like, man, you know, as anything, you're sitting there going, I wish I was over there, I wish I was over there. And I look out to my, to, to the north and I see a doe in yearling and I, all I caught was tines. I'm looking with my Nikons, I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And you know, I, I'm like, Dan, Dan, and Dan, moves the we put a coat over the other window moves the coat and he he gets right on this gorgeous big mainframe eight and he goes right to the tank and he's drinking and then and dan's telling me there's enough because i can't see he said oh there's another buck there's another one so we're sitting there and we're like okay well the doe and yearling start to walk to the north and we're like and dan's like they're walking away nope they're coming. I'm like, are they coming or what? Are they coming? And then he's going, oh, they're, they're, they're coming. They're cut. They're coming right through the bean field, right to us. Well, you know, I'm like, I can't see nothing. I'm relying on Dan to tell me, and Dan's filming, and I'm looking through the screen a little bit, and 
you know, all of a sudden he said, he's turning. We thought he was going away. Well, he turns and he's coming in and he's, it's like single file. Here he comes with the other ones and, and we're just sitting there going, oh man, will he give me a shot? Will he give me a shot? Is he coming this? Is he going to come all the way in? Well, you know, what's going to happen? Well, the anticipation was killing me. I'm like, Dan, is he, is he still coming? Dan's like, yeah, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. I'm saying, how far? 60. Dan, how far is he now? He's 30. Don't you see him? I'm like, no, I don't see him. I can't see him through the wood. I'm, I'm sitting here, I can't see, and I'm like, Dan, are, are they coming? He's going, they're coming. Dan, are they coming? They're coming, he's saying, you know? I said, how far away? He's like, 30 yards. I'm like, 30 yards, whoa. I grab my new Hoyt Spider, and I'm like, put that Scott on there, and I'm like, and all of a sudden I catch movement and sure enough here they are and, and we've got we got our cameras all set up all around and, and Dan's pretty much our cameraman that he, you know Ed cameraman controls everything the buck is right there feeding I'm at full draw and he's telling me wait wait <laughs> I wanted to get I wanted to take Dan out right there really I did and he's like, and all of a sudden, we, we think he got where we needed him in position wise, and, and uh, we let the Hoyt spider bite. And sure enough, man, he gave me that quarter away shot. We just let that Hoyt spider do it, give it, give it the bite we needed. He runs about 80 yards, the kill zone did everything we needed to. He drops, and then the celebration began. This. And he's looking at us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that buck. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a perfect date, huh? He is a gorgeous smokes look I have said this for 10 years. This is why you come to Double B. Look at that eight. <laughs> He's a gorgeous dude. He's magnificent. Look at that. <laughs> and it looks like, like usual, you made a good shot. Yeah, he, uh, I actually used the kill zone on him. Look at that hole. Is that a Great. beautiful buck? That is a beautiful buck. This is the last day of the hunt, getting ready to go out this afternoon. I've had a great time out here just watching the deer, meeting new people. It's been one heck of an experience. I can't thank everybody enough for everything. Wow, what an incredible week. It was. Once again, up there, Double B Outfitters, you guys just rock up Unbel there. I mean, Vicky, you know, Mr. T. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, you know, Tommy and, and I, we all, I mean, we scored, we, which was cool. We did. We had a great trip. I mean, once again, I mean, Tommy loves those Spitfires. Oh, I love my, my shock waves. I mean, I made up for the year before and everything is good. If you happen to see the Nikon Lucky Logo. Best optics in the world. You need to log on to archerschoice.com, click on the Lucky Logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win, I believe, a rangefinder and a whole bunch of other oh, great man, stuff from all of our manufacturers. Now, here's the crazy thing. Next week, well, guess what? what? We're going back, back to here. Ontario, Cashboy Outpost, Ooh, where bull hunting moose on a budget becomes reality for so many people every That's year right. going up there. And but, there's a ton of footage. Oh, of my gosh. The moose mania is just it was crazy. It was. So we'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's Choice. Choice.